everyone, my name is Habiba and I am very excited to be here with you today to share with you a couple of things about my home country, Morocco. I was born and raised in Morocco before moving to the United States where I am right now. In fact, I'm talking to you from the beautiful state of Arizona, but that's not what we're going to talk about today. Today we're going to talk only about Morocco, we're going to talk about the geography of Morocco, the climate, food culture, people of Morocco. So I hope that you find this to be fun and informative. And if you have any questions, I will be happy to answer them. I love Morocco. I'm proud to be Moroccan and it's always fun for me to sit down and talk about Morocco. So before we start, I want to show you the flag of Morocco. In fact, that's what I'm wearing today. This is the flag of Morocco. It's also behind me. If you're not familiar with Morocco or you don't know where Morocco is located, it's in the north side of Africa. When you look at it in the map, it's very close to Spain and it's bordered by two major oceans. To the north or on the north side of the country, Morocco, is the Mediterranean Ocean and then on the west side of Morocco is the Atlantic Ocean. So by way of having two major, beautiful, rich oceans bordering Morocco, it is providing Morocco with a lot of natural resources. Now, the size of Morocco. Morocco is not a large country. And if we were to compare it to Alaska, for example, Alaska is almost four times larger than the size of Morocco. So that gives you an idea about the whole country. But even though it's a small country, it's very diverse, very rich in resources, and there are a lot of things going on in there. Now, the climate in Morocco. Well, let's just say that the Mediterranean climate is very similar to the climate in Southern California, which is always pleasant weather most of the year. And that is the area in the northwest side of Morocco. And that's where 95% of the population is living because the weather is nice and the climate is better. In the Sahara, that's where the climate is arid and dry. And as you know, the Western Sahara is a major part of the country. Not a lot of people living in the Sahara, but it's an important part of the country and I will talk about that in a little bit here. Mountains, yeah, that's my favorite part. I love mountains anywhere, especially in Morocco. There are two main mountain ranges in Morocco. There is the Atlas Mountains, in central Morocco and then there is the reef mountains in northern Morocco. The Atlas mountain range is huge and it actually even goes beyond Morocco to other countries in um, North Africa but it does have sub ranges like the Ontai Atlas, the High Atlas, the Middle Atlas and this area of the country is so very beautiful. Uh, there is even the highest peak in North Africa in the Atlas mountain range. It's called Mount Tubqal, standing at an elevation of 13,674 feet, almost a 14er. And by the way, a 14er is what you call a mountain that is 14,000 feet, which we have a lot of them here in the United States. And by the way, the Atlas mountain range is a sister range to the Appalachian Mountains here in the United States. So that solidifies the relationship between Morocco and the United States, which is a strong relationship, by the way, because Morocco was the first country to recognize the United States as an independent country back in 1777. And by doing so, there was a treaty of friendship signed between Morocco and United States. Now, let's talk about people of Morocco. As of 2019, at least 37 million people call Morocco home. There are different ethnic groups in Morocco. There are Arabs, and this is the group of people who came from the Middle East back in time. There are the Amazirs or Berber, and those are the natives of not only Morocco, but other countries around North Africa. And then we also have some other ethnic groups from East Africa. And so by way of having different ethnic groups, you will see that people have different skin colors in Morocco. There are groups in the Sahara and other ethnic groups in the Reef Mountains. So it's very diverse. It's got a lot of different people um, in the country. And that takes us to languages in Morocco. So many languages are spoken in Morocco. Now we have two main official languages. When we go to school as kids, we learn Arabic 
standard Arabic and then we learn French and the reason we have French as an official language in Morocco is because Morocco was colonized by France and outside of Arabic and French there is the Moroccan dialect called Darija and Darija is the dialect that is spoken widely around Morocco and then we have the Amazigh language and then we have another language spoken by uh, people who live in the reef mountains and then we have some people speaking Spanish in the north of Morocco and then the south of Morocco and the reason being is Morocco was also colonized by um, Spain and Portugal at some point of time so so many languages are spoken but like I said when we go to school as kids from primary school up until high school we learn in both Arabic and French and then when you go to college depending on what major you choose if you choose to go to medical school or for an engineering um, degree it's going to be French in in high school if you choose to go uh, for a degree in Arabic literature it's going to be um, in Arabic and when it comes to English we do in public schools I'm talking because there is a difference between the curriculum in public schools and then the curriculum in private schools in public schools we take a few English classes in high school and a few English classes in um, when you go to college and so um, for me for example before moving to the United States I kind of had to learn English by myself by watching uh, movies and listening to um, English music I want to talk about religion in Morocco the majority of Moroccans or people who live in Morocco identify as Muslims but there are other minorities of Christians and Jewish and other people who follow um, different spiritual and religious beliefs but the majority of the country consists of Muslims so by way of being a Muslim country um, there are different things that you will see if you happen to visit Morocco uh, there are mosques all over the place um, almost in every neighborhood there is a mosque just like churches here in the United States um, some women will be wearing a headscarf if they choose to so um, you will see that some women are wearing headscarves some of them are not and Fridays are actually religious days just like Sunday here in the United States so on Fridays uh, people would go to the mosque for a group prayer around midday and it's very common for families to make a very popular dish called couscous so every Friday families would make um, couscous and it's basically a dish with couscous vegetables and some sort of meat um, growing up when I was a kid we would go to our grandparents house grandma would make couscous and then we would gather in there and share that meal together before going back to school and I found Fridays to be really fun and the other thing is um, when I was going to school in Morocco as a kid we would go from 8 to 12 to school and then we have to go back home to have lunch we wouldn't have lunch um, at school and then go back to school between 2 p.m up until 5 or 6 p.m uh, but it's different during the month of Ramadan the month of Ramadan is a religious month in not only Morocco but a lot of other uh, Muslim countries and Ramadan is actually a month in the Islamic calendar so the Islamic calendar has a month called Ramadan and during this month it's very important holiday if you ever visit Morocco during Ramadan things are going to be different so Ramadan is 30 days long um, and basically people would fast from dawn to dusk so uh, you would refrain from eating or drinking water from dawn up until the the sunset but when the sun sets you are allowed to to eat or drink now this practice is not done by kids so you would only participate in fasting when you get to puberty age so when we were when i was a kid i always wanted to to fast and i asked my parents why am i not fasting i want to fast just like you but it was a very fun month because we get to to take our food with us to school and instead of going to school from 8 to 12 and then go back home to eat and then go back to school from 2 to 6 p.m we would just um 
go to school from 9 up until 3 p.m. and we would take our lunch with us and I really enjoyed the fact that I can take my lunch with me to school and share it with my friends and classmates and just have fun eating um, together. So Ramadan is a very important religious holiday. During Ramadan a lot of uh, businesses and restaurants are going to be closed during the day if you happen to visit Morocco. So um, it's, it's very normal, uh, people are fasting, not a lot of people are going out to eat so businesses are going to be closed and then they do reopen after the sunset also on the 27th of Ramadan is a fun celebration where kids would dress up and put on Moroccan traditional wear girls would um, get henna tattoos in their hand and guys would go and get um, haircuts and you would go and gather with family and it's a fun celebration on the 27th of every Ramadan now let's talk about food and that is my personal favorite part and that's what I miss the most about being home the Moroccan cuisine is one of the best cuisines around the world. It's very diverse, very tasty, and I would love me some Moroccan dishes. Okay, so we'll talk about some of my favorite Moroccan dishes. The most popular one is tagine. Actually, tagine is the name of the pot where you cook this dish. And that is a tagine right here. That is a tagine. That's what it looks like. This is a pot you would place everything that you have to cook in this tagine and usually it's vegetables uh, with meat we have two popular tagines if you ever go to morocco or if you can find a moroccan restaurant uh, where you live you definitely want to try them uh, chicken tagine and chicken tagine you would cook chicken with pickled lemon green olives moroccan spices like saffron we use a lot of saffron in moroccan cuisine and then there's another type of tagine with um, meat either lamb or beef with prunes almonds and sesame seeds and the prunes are caramelized so it gives it a very nice mix of savory flavor and sweet flavor uh, we do have the popular moroccan mint tea which is my favorite tea it's very popular in morocco we have moroccan mint tea in pretty much every moroccan household three times a day breakfast after lunch and sometimes around dinner Moroccan mint tea is really tasty um, I was actually thinking about making some before filming this video but I totally forgot so this is an example of what um, a tea set looks like this is where we make the tea this is how we would pour the tea there is another interesting dish in Morocco called tangia not the tagine but tangia and this is very popular, especially in Marrakesh. Marrakesh is a very touristy city in Morocco. And if you ever visit Marrakesh, they have this popular dish called tangia. It's a pot that you would fill with meat and spices and it's cooked underground. So very tasty. I tried to make it once here. But it didn't go so well because you definitely need that underground oven to to slow cook it really delicious marrakesh is a very touristy city a lot of people who come visit morocco for the first time choose to visit marrakesh um so that takes me to to talk about the capital of morocco the capital of morocco is called rabat and the largest city in morocco is Casablanca this is where most of the businesses are a lot of job opportunities so it's very common for people after school or after high school to move to Casablanca for better opportunities now let's talk about how people dress in Morocco I mentioned that some women choose to wear a headscarf that's very common um, now times are changing so you will see a lot of people just dressed casually with the jeans sneakers t-shirts um, or some just casual tops but we do have um, a lot of beautiful traditional wear that is different from one region to the other um, uh, casually men and women both wear um, a dress called jileba 
So jlaba is worn by both men and women. It's just a long dress that covers uh, all of your body. It's very practical, to be honest. Um, if you are rushing to run an errand, you just throw it on top of whatever you are wearing and uh, you're good to go. Uh, for special occasions like engagement parties, baby showers, um, weddings, women usually wear uh, either a kaftan or takshita and there are so many beautiful designs for uh, how these takshitas and kaftan look like and they change every single year men would usually wear either a regular suit or they would wear a jileba and there is um, a different traditional wear in the southern sahara which by the way if you might be asking if indeed there are camels in Morocco. Yes, in the Southern Sahara, it's very common to come across wild camels. And if you visit Morocco as a tourist, you can take a tour in the, in the Sahara Desert and you can go for a camel ride, which is really fun. Now in the Southern regions of the country, there are uh, different types of, uh, of wear. Women would wear something called melehfa. So mlehfa is um, a piece of cloth that is very large and they use it to cover their body. And then there is um, a gandora is what men would wear. It's usually blue. And then they also wear turbans to cover their face from the sand, especially if they are riding um, camels in, in, the, in the desert. If there's any sandstorm that might hit, they are uh, protected from, from the wind and from the sandstorms. I have five questions that I'm gonna try to go through and answer them to the best of my knowledge. The first question, could you explain some of the components of culture in Morocco, clothing, food, language, religion, customs? I think we touch on pretty much most of these. Uh, for the customs, I would like to share about weddings in Morocco. Weddings in Morocco are so much fun. Back in time, people would celebrate weddings for up to four days, if not a week, nonstop one week of celebrations but things are changing right now and people would celebrate for no more than two days and usually there is a day called henna day this is where the bride gathers with her friends and family and it's usually just for women so she would put on a nice green outfit and accessories makeup and that's where she get henna tattoos with her friends and family. And then there is the wedding day. And the fun part that I wanna share with you about the wedding day is that the bride actually gets to change her outfit multiple times, sometimes up to five times, either different colors for the dresses she's wearing or uh, different outfits representing different regions in Morocco. So she would uh, wear a dress from a specific region in Morocco and then another dress and then towards the end uh, there will be a white uh, dress as well. And she, the bride gets carried um, in a table we call it Maria. So um, a group of five to six men would carry her up on their shoulders and just walk her around the venue where the wedding is taking place. That's about weddings in Morocco. Okay, so the next question that I have here, could you explain the environment, geography of Morocco? I think we talked about climate, natural resources, animals. Okay, so um, I'm not very well versed when it comes to wildlife and animals in Morocco, but for the natural resources, uh, the key resources in Morocco is the phosphate, uh, minerals, zinc, uh, manganese. And as far as the economy, the main pillars for the economy in Morocco are agriculture, uh, phosphate minerals, as well as tourism. Tourism is a very important component of um, the economy in uh, Morocco. What are some common hobbies or activities that people, kids participate in? I think it's different from one family to the other, uh, depending on how well off they are. But for middle class, it's very common for kids to play soccer. If you are visiting Morocco, you will see that kids are playing soccer in the street all the time. It's very common, especially boys. You don't see it much uh, um, with girls, but if uh, a family is well off, they can put their kids in private clubs and pay some extra money. Um, martial arts are very common, so um, kids would uh, practice uh, karate or taekwondo. I 
took some taekwondo classes when i was a kid so it's really just different from one family to the other but i would say soccer is very common next question what global issues affect Morocco? Even if Morocco is a beautiful country and I love Morocco, it's still a third world country and there are so many problems in the country. Water scarcity, especially because agriculture is one of the main pillars of the economy in Morocco. Poverty, access to healthcare, access to education, especially in secluded communities. When I was talking earlier about the mountains or the high Atlas mountains, communities living in those areas usually don't have access to education. And if they do, kids have to walk miles and miles every single day, which becomes a big challenge, especially when it gets cold up in the mountain. They don't have um, access or easy access to healthcare, especially because the infrastructure does not support uh, those secluded areas. There are even regions who don't have access to potable and drinkable water. There are a lot of people who don't have access to um, electricity, so let alone the internet. So a lot of problems, unfortunately, that come to mind when I think about challenges that the country is facing. And the final question, what is your favorite part about Morocco. Um, for me personally, I love the fact that even if Morocco is a small country compared to states here in the US or other countries in, in Europe, um, it's still very diverse, very, very diverse. Just a couple of hours drive um, from north all the way to south, you go through mountains, lush forests, and then beautiful oceans that are perfect for surfing and nautic activities. And then you go all the way down south and it's the Western Sahara. I love the diversity in the country. Um, I also love food. Food is one of the things that I really miss about being home. I miss people, the warmth, generosity, and how accepting they are. I hope that you found this to be informative. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. My email address is wearetrekkingpals at gmail.com. And I will be very happy to answer any questions that you might have. I very much enjoyed sharing with you. Thank you for letting me share with you and I hope that you can make it to Morocco one day, visit, explore the country and I wish you a beautiful day ahead of you. Take care.